Okadike, known as Odibezi. I'm the acting president of Nigerian Women Association. I want to thank the organizers of this, uh, should I call it uh, Imbizo? <laughs> These South Africans uh, mean like bring people together to get them understand some certain things. So today we are talking about the past uh, Nigerian election together with uh, the relationship between Nigeria and South Africa. So the little that I've got to add because a lot has been said about this uh, subject matter. This last uh, concluded uh, election embraced a lot of uh, child uh, voting. Wish anybody, I didn't even, I don't even see that anybody addressed that issue. Nigeria is a country where we don't have this type of uh, identity records that South Africa have today. But of recent, we began to have what is called the NIN, the national identity, that of which, if you have it in Nigeria, is as good as this South African IDs. And then later we were introduced to our voters card. And this is supposed to exactly explain or show who you are. But you can see for, for some reasons, you will see children less than 10 years voting for certain parties. And absolutely nothing was done about that. Another thing that was observed from this last election is that, like our chairman said that the uh, Labour Party, nobody knew or envisaged that such a revolution could sprang up. This party is still less than a year old. Nobody knew that just one man in the person of uh, Honorable Pito B can come up and change everything. But I can see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Because people thought, like uh, my sister Angel said, yeah, people in the past thought that their vote will, will never count. But this recent election, it came out as something nobody believed, that even people came to polling booths with their generators. They knew what could happen. People came there with food. And then after the election, we began to see something that we are not so surprised at. And then I asked myself, what are African leaders doing about this? They are not saying anything. It's like they are just looking. Like uh, when uh, the late Mugabe, former president of Zimbabwe was alive, during their elections there, things like this were happening. People were brutalized, people were disenfranchised, and then nobody is saying anything. South African government called it a quiet diplomacy. But we can all see the consequence of all these things. You can see, we all know that in South Africa now they are saddled with influx of immigrants that they can no longer handle. Today they are saying that even the ones that they, they themselves legitimized, I, I think around uh, 2010, that now the permits that they gave them, they are no, no longer willing to, to renew it. You are telling everybody to go home. You ask why is all this thing happening? African leaders, they are afraid that these things can come to them. They are afraid that they can do the same thing that is happening in these countries and they will not be able like to defend their wrongdoings. That is why when these things happen, nobody seems to say anything. Because I just asked myself, these things, even social media came today and improved a lot of things. Before, in Nigeria, we had only NTA, just like we had only SABC here. 
they, they don't show us these things. They only tell us things that are positive to the government. But today, apart from having a private televisions, we have our social medias where we see the truth. Anyway, I believe that what is going on at the moment, but because there is actually not a lot that we can say, especially when a matter is in court. I believe that the out after mass, at the end of the day, I think that Nigeria can get some support from the judiciary because I know that with this recent election we had in Nigeria, it's not going to, it will no longer be the business of the day. So I think that is a little I can add to that. And then when it comes to the Nigeria-South African relationship, I want to thank ADF again for so much that they have done to create this awareness. Because the common man on the streets, an ordinary South African, does not even understand exactly what migration means. We know that illegal migration is not a good thing, and no country encourages illegal migrations. But like I said earlier on, when bad things happen and leaders are not saying anything, they share in the consequences. Their borders are porous here, especially the land borders. People can flock in even without passports. If people are comfortable in their country, no one likes to leave their comfort zone. From here to Nigeria or from Nigeria to this place, you can't fly, you can't be on the air less than four hours, 30 minutes to get here. You come to a strange country, you start life all over again. You even live with the fear that one day you can lose everything. So I want to encourage ADF maybe to create more awareness through imbizos or through South Africans that I think that are part of this uh, organization to educate the common man on the streets. These people don't understand migration. These are people who have that common belief that you can wake up one morning and say, Nigerians go home, Zimbabwe go home. These things don't work like that. I am a South African too, but uh, I also have my fair share of discrimination. Sometimes when you assess, you try to assess government services, you go to this government parastatal, especially the hospital, then someone who does not even understand what migration is will still be calling you a foreigner, even when you are now a South African. A South African whose father is also a foreigner will be calling another person query query. These are things that have to be addressed so that our children in school will not be bullied. My child is a South African because we are South Africans too. I don't want my child to come home and say, mommy, somebody calls me query query. Sometimes this thing makes me feel somehow that one day it might happen. So these are the things that we really need to put more energy to so that everybody will understand that we are all South Africans. So that when we come together like this, people must value that these so-called foreigners, as we label them, they are part of the economy of this country. Any day that shops don't open in town, we know what that means. So, with this uh, few points of mine, I believe that uh, when we put more effort, there could be some changes so that we can really have that self-worth, have that self-dignity that even if we come to another person's country, it's not everyone that comes to another person's country and constitutes losers there. 
we as Nigerians, I know we've <coughs> added a lot of value to this economy and to this nation. And we all pray that we enjoy being in South Africa and contribute our quota positively. Thank you so much.